More and more, I see alternative worldviews get suppressed while mainstream media platforms encourage us to trust the science and promote that we follow the new norm. But might this kind of marketing and propaganda be harmful? I don't have any problem with people having their own beliefs, but if our decisions are subconsciously open to suggestion, are our thoughts even our own? We're influenced by everything that our senses experience, and we tend to attract what we focus on. So I'm concerned that we're being hypnotised to conform to become a stereotype product of our environment, and to discourage constructive criticism and new ideas. There are many ways to plant a seed. There's the analytical approach, distracting with a challenging task, causing you to become open to suggestion of the actual message. There's delivering a message or suggesting an idea through a story or character that you can relate to personally and then feel like you've come to your own conclusion. Sometimes we're triggered by direct suggestion, normally of two results an extreme pro and an extreme anti, either to maintain a paradox or to introduce a new idea, also known as the Hegelian dialectic. You're going to say using math and physics? That is an alarm to the geekiverse that we must rise up and, and counteract these forces from the dark side that are out there. We see how people change character when they're given certain roles or labels, it seems like we would know from the social experiments that pointing out differences only adds fuel to the fire. Instead of focusing on what makes us the same, we tend to doubt ourselves when we hear multiple people or even the same person multiple times. So when I realized that I could see streetlights 20 miles away at water level, that should have been obstructed by roughly 80 meters of vertical drop, I decided to offer 10,000 euros on national Spanish television. Now, due to the pandemic, I've had to take the offer down, but I think I've proved my point. Now, when you look on the news, please pay attention to how many spinning globes you'll see at the start with the countdown I don't believe that it's pure coincidence that you can find 666 so many times in the globe mathematics. Maybe if we weren't hypnotised with false beliefs, we wouldn't be so confused and find it so difficult to deal with some of the other problems in society. Astronomers sometimes say that space is curved, or that the universe is finite but unbounded. Whatever are they talking about? Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat, I mean absolutely flat, and that we live, appropriately enough, in a flatland. Now if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. So instead of debating beliefs, maybe we should keep experimenting and until verified, keep an open mind. Although we think of hand gestures for just sign language, they're also known as mudras, and it appears that they have a psychological effect on their audience, as politicians and royalty seem very, very keen and consistent on using them. So my concern is that if we are wrong about being on the globe, spinning on our axis, orbiting the sun, and the sun orbiting the Milky Way, these three movements could act like three different hypnotic spirals, casting us not only deeper into a trance, but also making us more susceptible to more deception and manipulation. But these guys are told how to pose, which means that there's definitely interest from the music industry and Hollywood to promote these things. Old habits? Or maybe we're just being cursed with bad fashion? It would be crazy to assume that all of these 
celebrities are consciously promoting Satanism. But it would be just as crazy to assume that none of them are in secret societies or satanic cults. When we know that people in high places have trust issues, so obviously for you to have such spotlight and influence over the general public, the only way that they could trust you is to have dirt on you. Maybe the conspiracy theorists were wrong about being chipped, but the specific biblical reference to the mark of the beast system, it's either prophecy or mockery, but it's definitely not a coincidence. We see numbers are important, they're everywhere. And if we don't see the pattern in nature, or if we don't see the pattern in a language, that's our own problem. We won't be able to play the game as well as those that do. I was a member of a secret society, and now I regret it because I see a lot of good people being misled to uphold a platform that helps evil thrive and it allows the network to plant agents in all types of fields and leave their symbols in plain sight for those that see to really just mock and um, negative prime the public to feel that they'll get the similar experience if they're silly enough to question any of the mainstream narratives even if our conscious mind doesn't acknowledge it at the time, we can get influenced by flash imagery, reversed audio recordings, and there's also many artists like Taylor Swift who have been known to release subliminal messages in the high frequencies. Not all Satanists believe in a horny red fallow, just like not all Satanists are into sex magic cannibalism and blood rituals. Some are just philosophically anti-Christian. You try and warn people of danger, nobody can take you seriously. And you'd say, well, look at all the evidence everywhere, you know? I mean, you've got to be blind not to see it. So I'm pretty convinced that people have been hypnotized not to see it. And I keep seeing these YouTubers in every country. There's these pro-narrative YouTubers and celebrities who are also indicating that they also have other affiliations. Like I say, logos of Hollywood and even NASA, but maybe because the best lies are 99% true. We're seeing a lot of ancient math and symbolism in modern religion and technology. We're seeing a lot of ancient ideologies in modern constructions. I'm seeing mainstream media telling people not to investigate and research for themselves, but rather to just trust the mainstream media. And this is causing a lot of division because they're installing different beliefs in us. So I, I, I think the best thing is just to go out and talk to people and have real conversations because you can learn from every interaction. I met my friend Mike, who's got me into biogeology and... He's been showing me some of the 50 characteristics that exactly correlate with the anatomy of an elephant of gigantic proportions, which has got us on the idea that, yeah, maybe there was titans like the Bible and the Quran and many other ancient cultures have spoken about, which is, you know, maybe we're looking at it all our lives and we're just ignoring it because we've been brainwashed with spirals to to just think that you know we've evolved from some big bang and we can see all around us that water erosion doesn't always add up because the channels are sometimes going horizontal and fractal and sometimes we can look at what's supposed to be water erosion and see correlations with the histology of a lung of a giant and then we see remnants of giants in architecture and uh, carvings that relate to the fallen angels. We see correlations with technology all over the earth in the ancient architecture. And we're told that it's just all decorative and uh, religious. Yet we see too many connections with power and energy generation. 
So it really looks like there was a lot more understanding of the Earth before than there is now. Because there seems to be way too many coincidences for this just to be laughable. You can see star forts that not only have amazing construction, but they resemble snowflakes and crop circles. So yeah, maybe we just don't see these things because we've got cognitive dissonance and selective attention due to having spirals installed in our subconscious. Maybe we don't see all of the celebrities promoting satanic rituals, just making out as if it's comedy and satire, yet the theme is constant. And it seems to be being taken very seriously, if not by the artists themselves, at least by the industries that employ them. According to the FBI files, the paedophile networks tend to use logos that include spirals. Evil, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's intelligent. Mm -hmm. It's smart. And it's invisible. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have a race. It doesn't have a religion. It has no politics. It's an invisible snake that while it is planning to make its attack, it is thinking to itself, I am going to divide my enemy into smaller, less strong groups. And then I'm going to make them hate each other so that it's easier to take them down. That we do tend to prefer comfort over the necessities. See, if everybody was honest and admitted that nobody actually knows for certain, then maybe we wouldn't be so quick to follow other people's ideas. It doesn't seem healthy that politicians are now broadcasting their affiliation to these ideologies of witchcraft, nature, and calling it art, when we know that the United Nations has been founded literally with the beliefs that the world is overpopulated, when we know that it's only overcrowded in cities. For this reason, there's lots of conspiracy theorists that are very concerned with the way that the world's going, and the the people that are guiding us there might not be so trustworthy, especially when we can see that the entertainment industry were able to predict so much of the current world events. And especially when we can see way too far for the dimensions given. Here's a video from my friend Vika, who could see thousands of miles away. And if you're still not convinced, then please check out the beautiful Bolivian salt flats, Salar de Oyuni, where they've even sent people from Oxford Academic to measure over a hundred kilometers and there's no curvature. I mean, come on, there's supposed to be 781 meters of vertical drop over that distance. To ignore that, would make you literally a science denier. And you don't have to be religious to acknowledge that there's over 200 verses in the Bible, at least nine ayahs from the Quran, and loads of carvings that all suggest that we are being lied to. I'm not convinced by seeing Buzz Aldrin on the moon, or by seeing the International Space Station fly above me. I would expect that the suits would not let x-rays through, and that they'd also not be so flexible. To be honest, I was more convinced by Michael Jackson's moonwalk, because I've seen Argos harnesses for adults, and I've also seen commercials and hairspray to get the floating effect. I'm not convinced that the shuttles can go at the speeds that they say, or that the people could even withstand the speeds that they claim. So there's lots of conundrums with the globe model being different than every other so-called planet in outer space. And there's also lots of contradictions in their own official statements. And you have to laugh at how easy it would be to fool people. But don't take my word for it. Look at the official data. Voyager's cameras afforded scientists spectacular close-up views of the Great Red Spot. A storm three times the diameter of Earth raging in Jupiter's atmosphere. Voyager atmospheric scientist Dr. Andrew Ingersoll 
The Great Red Spot is a counterclockwise rotating storm, sort of like a hurricane, that has persisted for over three centuries. I'm not buying it. You know, it what we see in reality and what was shown on television, it just doesn't add up. Especially when you see the same cloud patterns from one year to another, then you should really start to question the integrity of your trusted sources. This is the GOES goes west uh, satellite. Those clouds right in the middle, that line that's going horizontally across, they're not moving, they're not changing, they're not disappearing. Clouds disappear when it rains, Michael. You know all this. Please be honest. <laughs> Be honest, you're not. Well, that I would dumb. say it's probably not raining at the time there. This is the Discover satellite. Let's just watch them clouds that you're believing in. There you go. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so here Which we go. Is... We have the Goes East satellite. That doesn't look very realistic to me, Michael. Please, you should be able to admit this. Be honest. Um. So this is this is the Himawari Eight, which is in also geostationary uh, orbit. Again, no cloud movements. Oh, what a silly mistake. You I think will... these guys would be better than this? Look at the official imagery that we're being shown. And if some are fake, then why would they not all be fake? Why would they need to fake any? We can go to other f official footage, and we seem to see the same problem. And if some are fake, then why would they not all be fake? Why would they need to fake any? Why is the moon so dull in certain imagery, but we see it so bright? Why can't we find a real photo of a whole country? I recommend look for a country like the United Kingdom or France or Spain and you'll see that there's vast differences. There's absolutely no way that we could see such change with such detail but not see cities and it's, it's, it's laughable. They even admit that they're using animations. And now they're admitting that the moon is inside our atmosphere. We can't just ignore the idea of Earth's atmosphere being next to a vacuum when every experiment that we observe shows that gas pressure needs a container. We also shouldn't ignore that a railgun can use a laser beam and shoot a target a hundred miles away without having to account for curvature or the Coriolis effect. Just like a helicopter can hover for hours in one position, or the Red Bull skydive could spend three hours above New Mexico without having to worry about landing in a different place. And you can clearly tell that they faked the curvature with a fisheye lens. Yeah, every, every lens. Yeah, every lens. Some so, distortion. So, so there, there is some distortion. Yes. And so when someone claims that they've seen the curvature, ask for a photo. And just remember that even the Virgin Galactic showed convex and concave. So I recommend doing practical experiments, which is the best scientific method I know of. But many people just ignore practical experiments and depend on the different explanations as excuses for seeing what we see in reality. We all can learn about the phenomena of light refraction and mirages. When we make repeated observations, we can observe that the horizon is an apparent location due to atmospheric refraction. We see things get stretched and squashed and the horizon being an apparent location due to optical illusions, due to atmospheric conditions. But what we don't see, we don't see any distortion to objects on a clear day when we do see too far. And we can all, so I'm not buying that it's a mirage. I'm not buying 
that it's a mirage when National Geographic and the Discovery Channel claiming to have proven curvature when their own footage clearly shows that they are mistaken or intentionally dishonest blatantly reading off a script or always promoting official narratives and ridicule practical experiments and be in the trending section the science speaks for itself you can either believe in what you've been told the look for an explanation in a book or you can make the experiment yourself this field of research could tell us a lot more about the nature of our reality i mean cymatics is like looking into another realm, it's like looking into the other dimension, taking a glimpse into another dimension, they're already using it to try and decipher what dolphins are saying, and they're building languages, they're also using sound to visualise what dolphins can see, people ask if the earth is flat, what's underneath, there are many explanations and even experiments that can demonstrate how alternative world views could be possible. At the bottom surface of the liquid, it floats in place, just like it would at the top surface. The effect does depend on the system being shaken hard enough though, and at the right frequency. If the vibrations get too small and gentle, the ball and the liquid will eventually fall. But get the shaking right, and that is how science can lead to a boat floating upside down on a levitating layer of liquid. Just like the game Pac-Man, where you go off one side of the screen and appear on the other, different people can have different explanations and even predictions, but you can't know for certain unless you manipulate. Whatever shape Earth is, maybe we're only able to see the physical plane of existence, like we see the sand or water form patterns in cymatics experiments, but we don't see the entire pattern of the magnetic field unless we glimpse into that dimension with a ferrocell lens. And even then, maybe we're only looking at a 3D shadow of an actual 4D shape. I wish you could actually see this in person because you literally do have over three inches of depth on a ferrofluidic solution that is less than one micron thin. These little black hole looking formations over here, that's either pole respectively. Just like we can only partially see a magnetic field, maybe we're only able to partially see the moon, sun, and stars. An electron does not exist in only one location around an atom. It actually exists as a wave. And what that means is that there are volumes around the nucleus of an atom that an electron will fill in. A single electron can actually be an entire sphere around the nucleus of an atom, or these orbitals as we call them. But again, I caution you, nothing's actually moving around like a planet around a star. Some of these orbitals are shaped like dumbbells, and a single electron actually fills out a volume that looks like a dumbbell, or sometimes they look like a disk. So despite our depictions of atoms with, you know, the nucleus in the middle and electrons going around the outside, reality is nothing like that. Electrons form these volumes, and some of those volumes even go through the nucleus. Some of these dumbbells actually have electrons existing inside the nucleus as well. What an atom really is is far more complicated than our artistic depictions of it, far more mysterious. So yeah, we could be looking at a reflection, or like they say, a shadow of a higher dimensional object projecting into our dimension. At different times of the year, we can all observe Venus either before the sunrise or just after the sunset, extremely bright in the blue sky, which suggests that it cannot be positioned in between us and where the sun is, as we're taught to believe, as that would mean that we're looking at the dark side, and it's clearly as bright as any star in the sky. Not only do we still see constellations like the Big Dipper, still going around Polaris in exactly the same place. The stars haven't changed position in thousands of years, as seen in the constructions of the ancient civilizations. The sun and the moon make figure eights in the sky over the course of a year, known as an analemma. Why is it that we don't see this in any of the constellations? considering that we're supposedly on the other side of the sun. We're being encouraged to ignore reproducible evidence for theories, and if mainstream media promote something with a cartoon, I'm supposed to believe in it, I'm supposed to take their word for it, when it could have been manoeuvred by hand. I just keep seeing inconclusive evidence that's being up for debate to keep people divided. 
politics as usual. And as always, mainstream media promotes the debate because it keeps us against each other. Maybe if people didn't subconsciously believe they were spiralling around the universe, they'd be a little bit more suspicious about the Antarctic Treaty. Maybe they are hiding other lands and resources, like Admiral Byrd said. Or maybe there is a firmament, as depicted in the Bible, Quran, and many of the ancient carvings. But I wouldn't recommend going there. Apart from the potential threat of military, you don't want to come over as a cult member. Trust me, I've been there. In general, be suspicious of anybody that you keep seeing on mainstream media, especially if they add to the satire. The thing is, if you don't get vaccinated, a germ can get in you and incubate and uh, mutate. And then you produce, right? Then you produce a new strain that everybody, has to, everybody else's immune system has to deal with. So you could make a very strong argument that you're required to get vaccinated. It's like a law, a rule, a regulate. You could make that argument. Ooh, whoa. And it's good to stay suspicious of anybody else that keeps appearing in the spotlight, especially if they cause division or add to the satire that there's already too much of. Because of negative priming, sarcasm, the satire, it causes people to not be able to take many topics seriously and just go along with the narrative of those that are a potential threat, no matter how much they contradict themselves. We just seem to put a lot of faith in technologies of people when there's other technologies already out there that have been going for quite a while that nobody seems to be aware of and nobody seems to be worried about the other effects on us, on nature and everybody's worried about carbon and everybody's worried about viruses but nobody's worried about toxins nobody sees the damage of toxins and that could be other causes and other explanations and that maybe we're not always being told the truth and that sometimes there's a lot more financial gain behind a theory and why the majority of sequences have to be generated and they even admit that they only put a small percentage could possibly mean we've got a misdiagnosis or maybe the original interpretations weren't a hundred percent but in case things are being blown out of proportion for other agendas it might be wise to just remember that other things seem to come and go we're putting a lot of faith in statistics that could be skewered i mean i'm sorry but i'm not a flu denier i think it's insulting to say that every country has similar outcome by just going with the flow, so much so that people don't even see the harm that they're causing to themselves. And the same pattern of punishing the person that speaks out is echoed throughout celebrities and politicians. Even though, as influencers, they should all know about the experiments that prove that people with authority have a very strong influence over the general public. Hence why many times predictive programming is used beforehand to obtain a desired result from the audience. Because it's well known that people do abide to authority. As true as the cliché practice makes perfect, with repetition things become normalised and we acquire new habits. And new or otherwise previously undesired customs become normalised. Could it be that we're allowing ideas and liberties to be hijacked by organisations with agendas? I'm not claiming to know the truth. I'm just trying to explain why I believe scepticism is healthy and necessary in society. It might be tough going out alone at first. I can speak from experience. But with time, people will see that you're doing a good thing, for a good cause. People will come and contribute their skills and their ideas. And eventually you're not the odd ones out. Everyone wants to be part of it because everyone realises that they were mistaken and that they wish they'd jumped on sooner. But it's better late than never. So to everybody out there, I really, really ask you, please stop listening to what other people say. 
and just make some primary observations for yourself and really look with a critical eye at the official evidence and I'm quite sure you'll come to the same conclusion. You've just got to connect the dots.